Welcome back to the final game of the round robin here at EUCS. And this is the big one, Stress. Gamers 2 up against Team Dignitas EU. If Gamers 2 win here, they will tie Dignitas EU and own the head-to-head, -head, which means they will take away first place from Dig, despite the whole amazing split they've had. But first, let's get to the teams. On the blue team, trying to go full Fnatic, which has already been taken away from them, is Wonderwear in the top lane, Obvious in the jungle, Senkux in the mid lane, and Kobe and Nisbet in bot lane AD carry finishing up Dignitas EU. And something we have to hit before we get into this game stress is Senkux has just been straight up underperforming. In the first couple of weeks, great. Standard Senkux, what we saw from the spring. He had a great performance. You can see there, 10.39 KDA on all those assassin picks, the Azir's coming out, the Twisted Fates as well, great. But then we went later on into the split into week four, the first game of week five. He started playing these control mages, the meta shifted as well, played some Orianna, 2.9 KDA. And it was a big difference from what we saw at the very start. And the question is, is it a playstyle change with these control mages? Is it him playing stuff that people are telling them to? Is it a meta shift? Whatever it is, it's not working. I feel like it's a mix of issues for why we're not quite seeing the same Senkux as we did in the in the first few weeks. I think meta issues is one of them. A uh, couple of different changes in mid lane. We know that Senkux likes uh, champions he can kind of solo carry on, yeah. which still there is the potential for that. But uh, certainly, I feel like it's extenuating circumstances. You look at the events that uh, the Team Dignitas EU team have been to. Uh, they have lost out on their coach for a little bit as well now with uh, Broken Shard going over to uh, to North America to help yeah. with the North American team digging the task lineup. So I don't think it's like a major problem right now, but it certainly is something he has to fix and the team has to fix coming into this week. I mean, it's manifesting into a major problem. So uh, yeah, should try and nip it in the bud as soon as possible. But seeing red, it's gamers too. Smitty J in the top lane, Kickers in the jungle, replacing Max Law coming in from the Unicorns of Love. Perks in the mid lane with Jesse and Hybrid, all the usual suspects coming in here. And the biggest thing we've got to talk about stress is Kickers coming in from the Unicorns of Love. He was a huge part of the team's consistency, even though they didn't have any consistency, but it was a team who uh, was not able to do so, and right. maybe Kickers can do that on other teams. It, it, it's an interesting one because certainly, as you said, Gamers 2 were trying to bring in consistency with Hybrid, uh, with the Hybrid. first Maxwell yeah. coming in, Max now Law, yeah. uh, now Kickers coming in instead. So can they bring Gamers 2 for one of the very first times up to the number one spot in Challenger, which they really haven't been at before? Yeah, that is the big question. But we do need to dial in on the man Kickers, and also his opponent obvious in this one. As Kickers was that backbone of UOL, he's now exited that team, now into this team. Can he mold this team into a strong uh, contender, even maybe for the LCS and get the auto uh, promotion? That's a big question because I took a look back at how Kickers performed uh, on the LCS stage in the summer split. And honestly, in the summer split, the stats for Kickers don't really show him as anything much more than a mid-tier LCS jungler. Uh, you know, he had an OK KDA, just under four, decent kill participation, but never really seemed to have the amazing games that we saw from the Shaco, from the Udyr that we saw in spring split. So... It was just underlying issues in Unicorns of Love, mm. and we know that there were issues in the Unicorns of Love with shot calling from what how Kikis has kind of talked about since he left. He put the post up on Facebook when he announced that he left, uh, and he said two very important things. He said, firstly, we did not have a designated shot caller in the Unicorns. And the second important thing, a little bit further down in that uh, letter, was that he didn't feel like he could show his fans what he was capable of with the Unicorns of Love. So now let's see if he can show fans what he's capable of in Gamers 2. Yeah, let's see if he can stress. To his opponent, obvious though, he was this solid addition to Team Ding last year when there was a big overhaul of the team at the very start of the split. He was just a great addition. Right. Turns up every week, never seen a problem with obvious. Bot lane's done well, top lane's done well, and Senkux has shined, apart from the last couple of weeks. But obvious has been this like stone on the team, which has always been there. For sure. He's been so well-rounded for the team. He facilitated the carries. He had a decent read on the early game. And generally, his shot calling was a lot better, or the team's shot calling, which I imagine was spearheaded by him, was a lot yeah. better than other challenger uh, junglers and challenger teams. However, the big question for me is, what can a supposed mid-tier LCS jungler do against the top CS jungler when the stats are so different. Yes, one is CS stats, one is LCS stats, but mm. I think this is where we kind of want to draw the comparison is 10.4 KDA for obvious, just under 70% kill participation. How will those stats be affected now with games against 
a, uh, a former Unicorns of Love player. That, remember, Kikis was second place in spring split with the Unicorns of Love. This is a big, big test for both of these junglers. Yeah, it's a big change. And also, is he going to make the same impact? Because we've seen a lot of LCS players come into right. CS and not make a big impact. Or maybe they have made a big impact, but negatively. So, <laughs> so we'll see if right. Kikis can uh, make a big positive impact. And yesterday, he certainly did. He was playing Lee Sin, and we just saw an instant change from gamers too as we went into this one we did you can see the kick is lee sin on that one uh perks got himself the victor at this point uh, just everything in this game seemed to be set up for gamers too to be more aggressive than dignitas look at team dignitas they really were just waiting on getting to later into the game and gamers two played that out exactly how you would expect in the opening because there was uh, an instant change for the gamers two opening Look at this max range hook coming in. Obvious gets pulled in. That is first blood going over to Kikis. And Come from on, that man. first blood, he grabs himself a brutalizer and pressures out Obvious for the first 15 minutes of this game. Anxious shouldn't even work like that. But he gets a smooth slide through Senkux's ultimate. And Senkux's uh, performance this game on Oriana was just kind of meh. He just didn't do a whole lot. The fights were very messy. And he didn't clean up those fights by landing good shockwaves. He just landed on one or two people. Yeah, Dig looked uncoordinated in these fights is one of the things is you can see just going in at different times, just never really being on the same page, even though they were getting a couple of kills. The game was fairly even up until a little bit later on in this game. Yep. You can see, again, this is another example of Team Dignitas just kind of sticking around under a tower a little bit too long. But the fairly even game blew wide open at 22 minutes. Uh, and at this point, it's Perks' Victor ult that does it. Yeah, huge Victor ult to put himself 4-0-4. Four, four. And look at this fight, how clean it was. Kick is going to go down? Nope, he's good to go. Look at all those shields. And this opened the way to take an inhibitor, two towers, and onto the Baron. Yeah, onto the Baron indeed. And here comes the decision-making. Being upset by Team Dignitas, or at least their own. Uh, first one do I teleports in on his own, randomly into the fight and goes, hey guys, I can do this. Senkux flashes forward. He kills Kikis is the important thing, but the rest of his team is not there to follow up. Jesse picks up the Baron, and again, it's one after one. <sighs> filtering into the fight and you know honestly from there it's an easy setup nice little e over the wall into the trap and the queue from jesse to close that game out style points netted but uh yeah that side that you just had basically describes that game from uh dignitas it was just not the dignitas we've been seeing very sloppy and we, we had to look at the kickers because listen great play four two and nine went for that early brutalizer and straight up bullied obvious that's not something we have ever seen before from any other challenger jungler and then perks as well just another great game yeah it really was uh, uh, just a great game from perks we've seen uh, time and time again just how well he can he can play and honestly this reminds me of you know the beginning of when we started watching team dignitas eu in summer split it was perks now has a jungler that is going to facilitate him well just like Senkux used, well, still does have, but doesn't seem to be utilizing all that well in the last couple of weeks. Well, if Obvious is taken out of the game by Kickers, then he has no one to support him. And you can see that right here again, Senkux's third game in a row. It's not super good. Two, three, and five on uh, on that Oriana. And we need to see Senkux pick up speed again because right. at least if they, win, if they win or lose here, okay, it's going to upset the seedings. But for playoffs, for sure, Senkux has to pick it up because if he doesn't, then, I mean, playoff chances are going to plummet. Yeah, he, he really does. Uh, and honestly, I feel like it's just a weird kind of time watching Team Dignitas the last week or so. They just have not looked yeah. on top four. And as you said, it could be a multitude of factors. Mm. Uh, we're going to see how this champion select goes for them. Jace will be their first ban aimed at perks. Makes sense. Uh, yep. Had some great performances from the Jace on perks. Um, Rek'Sai will be the next ban that will be aimed at Obvious. That takes one of the tier one junglers off the table. Nidalee will be the uh, other prime pick in the jungle. Gragas is still open for these guys. Fresh will be the next banning against Nisbet. Nisbet has landed some insane hooks through the course of the round robin so far. And Callista will be the final ban from Dick. It will be. We've just been rounded out with uh, a oh, severe hey. ban. Had me. <laughs> Add me, indeed. Severe ban is the last one to come through. So, where does that leave us? Corky is available. Neither ADK. I guess Jesse's kind of a corky player, a little bit. Uh, does the yeah. is it first pick Gragas here from Team Dignitas? Now that Nidalee's not available, Rexai's not available, it will put Gamers 2 onto a second tier. Uh, Rise is also available. First time, actually, in a very long time, other than that game yesterday that keeps tripping me up, that Rise <laughs> is up. As, uh, 
Yeah, not many games that he's been available to pick. Whoa! Hey, there he is. There he is. Yeah, so uh, Gragas will be that first jungler picked up by Wonderware, making sure the Dignitas have that on their side. Instant response of Rise. It was like, if Gragas is taken away, we're going to take Rise. And then the Nautilus as well as the Flex. Two more fast pickups of Morgana and the Victor. Victor will be going on to Senkux, obviously. Again, we're seeing a Victor in the uh, third rotation in Champion Select. So, yeah, again, picking that early on. Going back to Spring Splits joke. Senkux being a Victor one track. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. we know it's a comfortable champion for it. This matchup, in theory, should be uh, straightforward for him. But he has to contend with what is up. With Cassiopeia that we just saw Koski play, Azir is available, which we know Perks can play. Yeah. Uh, Varus is up. That's the matchup we see all the time in the EU LCS because Azir is typically banned. And Azir is not. not banned in this <laughs> game and he is getting picked. The Emperor will make his way onto the rift here. So that will be picked up by Perks. Next pick will be Caitlyn. Again, we're seeing that into the bottom lane for Jesse here. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, Senkux, he was known as uh, a bit of a, an ongoing joke was that he was a one trick on Victor. Then Victor was disabled and then he had to go elsewhere and then showed <laughs> he was great on every champion. So, yeah. So, what is the AD carry of choice here? Callista Siva banned away. Corky not the best pick into Caitlyn because of the range disadvantage. Then again, most champions you pick here are going to be at a range disadvantage. Unless you go any AD carry, um, and that's still got nerfed. Okay, so. let's let's be let's be real. This is a game for first place, boss. <laughs> this is this well, is yes, the game. Well, yes, but you're saying what can be picked into Caitlyn that matches range? Cogmore for the other one, but <sighs> only for a certain I amount mean, of seconds. Cobby is a Jinx player. That would make sense. Swap over to the Rockets as yeah. well. Gives you that bit extra Cobby range. Cobby is for also himself. a uh, Cog player, but yeah. And a top laner here. Who do you pick top into Rise? Karma. Or Morg. Okay. No, that you no. I. Mm, uh, I mean, we've uh, seen Morgana top lane. Like, yes. Karma. I've not seen Karma in top lane for a long time, and also the base damage has got changed. She got turned into right. more of a support. True. Does she work in that scenario? Her anymore? damage got I don't think so. on her Q. I think it's going to be Morgana. That's a Rengar. That's, that's a, a Rengar. Rengar as well. That's also that's also Kickers on a Rengar. I am trying to think. Have we seen Kickers on Rengar? I feel oh. like maybe one Once. game, like in spring yeah. split or early summer split. But Rengar I know typically, it, but typically it has not found success in a while outside of Korea. Still doesn't find much success in Korea even these days. Yeah. So hmm. it's such like a, a difficult jungler to get rolling because you're relying on landing the bolus, landing uh, just the crowd control. However, one thing that they will have fairly you know, strong is between Rise and Rengar. That's a lot of single target crowd control that's coming out. So... Who knows? Man, I've not seen yeah. Kickers on Rengar. He wanted to try different things. He wanted to have his own way in the team. That's why he left <laughs> Unicorns. He's just Rengar. Just yeah, it was funny. We were talking in the break as well. Will Kickers bring over some of the things that he's acquired from Unicorns, which is these funky picks, throws people off guard, but it's played exceptionally well. So mm. he knows exactly how the pick can work and how it fits into a composition. Will the Rengar be the same? Lee Sin was up and he didn't opt for it into the Gragas, mm. which was the matchup he had yesterday. Yeah. And did very well with. So that's an interesting one that he didn't choose to go for that one. But I think the most interesting thing is Karma. A lot of her damage got gutted uh, a couple of patches back when they took the, the damage off her Q. So I'm interested to see how that goes. But one thing is for certain, this team composition is going to be able to utilize uh, the, the movement speed that's going to come from Karma when she mantras her E. Get yourself moving pretty quickly uh, in this setup. With the Jinx, be able to push down towers Poke going to come from Karma as well. The other side of the rift, as we said, single target crowd control coming out from Rengar Rise. Then you've got Azir and Caitlyn for tower pushing. Going to be difficult to deal with. If one member of Team Dignitas dies, towers are going to fall very quickly after. They are indeed. Well, <laughs> that's a lot of interesting things in this game. <laughs> and I think that's going to change your votes. And I'm about to ask for them. Tweet at LOL Esports. Get on Twitter. Use those hashtags DEUWIN or G2WIN. Or even just use the hashtag EUCS and talk about this game. Because there is a lot going on. And this means a lot for both these teams. And also the teams below them. So there's a lot on the line for these teams. So the winner of this game will be playing against Maus in the playoffs. The loser will have to face Wicked and the rest Correct. of the Denial lineup. Okay, on to the Rift. Gamers 2 on the red side. Team Dignitas EU on the blue, heading out of base. Will they go for an aggressive early game play? 
We'll see as they fan out. Wonder where on this Karma. Now, as you mentioned a couple patches ago, Karma's damage did get reduced because uh, Q would hit you and you would lose most of your health. Yeah, it was uh, really annoying. <laughs> yeah, not great. We used to see it a bit in the mid lane. We saw it before that a bit in the jungle. Then we saw it in support. Kind of all been all over the place. Um, in the top lane, ages ago, before her rework, we saw her in the top lane. But we haven't seen her there since. And it was great into melee matchups because of the tether, because she could lock people down. But how would we do it against the Rise? Hmm. Uh, honestly, I mean, Karma doesn't have anything like a, a silence. So it's not like you can really lock down Rise uh, w with regards to his ability rotation later into the game. One thing that maybe I can see from it is because Ryze wants to stick on you, uh, you would be able to put down Focused Resolve. Mm. And once you've got a couple of points in that, the duration may just about be long enough to outlast the Ryze and run away. I don't know. I haven't I seen wonder. this matchup particularly. But that's my estimation is you just pop the Focused Resolve, Q backwards, and Mantra E yourself out of there. And if he wants to chase you, he's getting stunned. At max rank... Focus Resolve will outroot Rise. Right. Because Rise uh, was nerfed. It's no longer two seconds. It's like 1.7. Yeah. So that would work. That's what I. That's what I think is is probably the reasoning for this one. I know that Team Dignitas has to be working on a lot of picks with regards to uh, how to play against certain meta champions. I know that uh, one of the things we actually saw at DreamHack Valencia was Senkux actually played two games of Azir mm. into Sivir. Uh, not Azir, sorry. <laughs> uh, Anivia, that's a very different champion. Uh, he played two games of Anivia in the finals against Kick. Um, so I know they're working on a lot of these strats right now and have been actually fairly vocal on it. So this might be one that Wonderware has been kind of sitting on because obviously to not ban Rise and not first pick it, is uh, a fairly big statement that uh, Team Dignitas are making for themselves. I very want to know. I, ve I very want to know. I very much want to know what Wonder where Max is in this game because Focus Resolve his W, which is the snare. And hold that thought for a second. This hybrid does get locked down in the bottom lane. Kobe will put down some damage, but so will Jesse. Um, ooh, Piltover goes wide, um, but it does outrange basically everything that uh, Rise has on an on-click by 75 units, which is. Uh, Three quarters of a teamer, if you can think about that. So she does outrange him with lock, and right. has the longer tether. So it seems like a good matchup on paper. On, on paper, and I'm, I'm, as you said, I'm wondering where he does end up maxing. Remember that uh, Rise now has to max Q to get the duration Correct. of Arcane Mastery up. So it's not like you have to max the W to begin with. What wonder where? I'm assuming you just kind of go equal, maxing Q and E, uh, Q and W mm. in the same pace that Rise will. That's my estimation for, for what Wonderware is likely to do, but again, we'll track it. He has put a second point into his Q, no points yet in his shield. Yeah. See if we can connect those uh, soul flares as well. That is, of course, the mantra version of Inner Flare. The hook comes across very close to Kabi. Does not juke that pilt over this time. Bot lane, we spent a lot of time top lane. Remember, mid lane and bot lane also a thing. Senkux is on his victor once again, up against the Azir here. Uh, Perks has had a lot of play on Azir. Senkux has had a lot of play on Victor and Azir. Uh, Kickers has taken away this crab. Going for this conservative early start, getting that vision down. He'll be going for the recall. That is uh, another hook not quite connecting from hybrid. Obvious, heading into this middle lane. He has double buffs. He's looking for perks. Death laser, death ray, hands on to perks. Not quite in range for the body slam or the body slam flash. So obvious will be moving away from here. This is a uh, lot less is happening in this early game than we saw yesterday. That was very nice by Nisbet actually, throwing the uh, dark binding towards Jesse while he was uh, looking for hybrid. Yeah, just making sure that uh, if Jesse had stepped forward, he'd have been able to catch him. Uh, interesting kick is yesterday went for the Brutalizer, Oof. opted for the double long swords, and from forces obvious to body slam over the wall. Hasn't opted for his jungle upgrade. This is something, Again. as we said, he did yesterday after getting the first blood. Couldn't afford the Brutalizer straight up this time. Kick us. I only play champions that can go <laughs> Brutalizer first. Well, I mean, that's not going to work out too well in the meta overall, since uh, Runeglaive Nidalee is... Uh, <laughs> One of the queens of the jungle, and then it's Cinder Hulk from there. But we'll see if we can get the Rengar to actually work for him. Because that's one of the biggest problems Rengar has, is you start building damage and then you have to build tank. Unless you want to be squishy and try and just one-shot people for the entire game. 
doesn't yeah. really have enough tankiness on the rest of his team to actually be able to do that, though. Funny enough, in the uh, in the article of Vines and Felines, over in North America, when uh, the Rengar was played, um, they were saying essentially you either go all in on one or the other. You go all in on damage, you go all in on tank. Because otherwise you do neither. Perks well, is going all in though. He is, and Arvius will be going all out, but he gets bowled down and locked in place. And Cook's returning the damage. Doesn't have a whole lot in this game as Victor. Jesse going forwards through the Flame Chompers will be netting back through the Minion Nine as well. A lot of damage on Zakabi. And his bet will be trying to get those autos down as well to return fire. Just lots of trades in the bottom lane, but not a whole lot has been burnt. A lot of damage all across the board around the map in in this one so far, but no kills. KKC is looking for one on Obvious. Oh, 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 did not find him. The last point one of the yes. recall. I was going to say, it's the last point one of the recall. It got normalized from uh, between half a second and a quarter of a second <laughs> yeah. to being the very, very, very last point one. So uh, Kick is getting a little unlucky that that wasn't a split second earlier. I don't think he'll be able to, to set up a, a gank in this bottom lane unless... Uh, they really land some hard crowd control, but Nisbeth will have the black shield as well. So not like any of the crowd control is really going to stick without Team Dignitas messing that one up. At least now you know exactly how much you missed by, which is uh, nice. But obvious in the top lane, he's f uh, looking for his gank to come in as Wonderware has pushed up the wave. Uh, level 6, of course, will be putting that second point in Mantra, has been maxing the Soul Flare. So, does Smitty J now read that there is a gank coming, though? Kikis certainly does, by the way he's positioned. There's a pink ward in the river as well. Uh, so, now it's, does he face check the bush? And yes, he does. Smitty J well, face checks. Getting the root down. He will be flashing away. Wonder where doesn't he have any more damage to offer? Obvious. Thinks about the tower dive. Thinks better of it. There was Kikis just around the corner, just in case he needs to go for it. Bottom lane, Nisbet was trying to freeze, but Hybrid makes sure he doesn't get that down. Obvious. We'll take this opportunity to clear out this pink ward. Uh, Kikus, uh, I don't think you can really interrupt him. He's going to get this pink. He's going to come in with the bowler, but obviously he's already over the wall and there's nothing for Kikus to get. So now they just know his position and Kikus didn't get anything from that. Right, but at this point Kikus hasn't really got all that much when it comes to actually objectives and, uh, and, and any kind of kills and assists. We are at a 0-0 game so far. So Kikus' early game impact has been a lot lower than yesterday and he wants to change that with an attempted blue buff seal. You can actually see Nautilus and Perks coming across here. Wonderwares come down from the top side, but so has Rise. This could be a four versus three setup here. Spot. Nobody has moved from Dig. Obvious trying to get away here. Hybrid is there to lock him down and he will be leaping after him with the Rengar. Wonderware trying to get back to this turret, but the order is given and he gets taken out by Perks. That was a really weird setup from Team Dignitas with regards to nobody moving. Okay, you don't expect Nisbeth to go with that, but Senkux in the middle lane w had been shoved in, and he had to clear the wave, or at least in his mind he had to clear it before he moved across. So they knew the numbers were always going to be on Gamers 2's side, and they end up 2-0 and zero from it. Yeah, Nisbeth now roaming down, Nisbet, sorry. Uh, roaming down into the bottom side of the map. We'll be going through this. Has been tagged out by that ward, so... Gamers 2 at least have uh, the knowledge of that as he's roaming. But yeah, that was incredibly well worked out from Gamers 2. Again, the early game advantage. Something we haven't historically seen from Gamers 2. Nisbet aggressing in the bottom lane. Something we haven't historically seen from Nisbet. Generally getting those advantages just by himself in that bottom lane on those supports. Uh, Senkuk's in this mid lane. Does have that slight CS advantage over Perks. Uh, in terms of raw mechanics, I definitely would rate Senkooks a little higher, but Perks has been way more consistent, I feel, over the split for sure. So Kikus, now taking his jungle, has uh, gone for the Warrior Enchant, so got that Brutalizer, picked that one up. And Hybrid is now pushing in the bottom lane, so a lot of passivity at the moment uh, with those two kills going into Gamers 2. And obviously, just making sure the jungle is Ooh. good to go, Perks. The, uh, Shurima Drift. Yeah. The order is given. Would you like fries with that? Oh, Kick is heading into the top lane. Has his ultimate. There's the exclamation mark. He finds Wonderware. Gets a lockdown as well with the bowler. Gets his seed for days. You are not going anywhere, Wonderware. Looking for the extra heal. He will get it from the mantra. But Smitty J gets the kill regardless of Q. Yeah, tried to get the, the focused resolve with that mantra bonus of the healing, but it just was not enough. Wonderware right now, he has a haunting, guys. So he does have that little bit of extra health. But honestly, right then, 
couldn't quite read the Rengar coming to his lane until it was far too late. And this Rengar pick is starting to work out for Kikis. Big engage bottom lane. Oh, Jesse got caught in the Flame Chompers, but it is quickly turned around onto Nisbet as the ultimate landed from Hybrid. Perks is coming down though, and Kikis is in tow. This is very problematic for Team Dignitas here. Nisbeth caught out. I'm looking to pick up the kill here, looking for the Conquering Sands as well. Already used it. The flash into the dredge line onto Nisbet. In with the soldiers as well and takes him out. Get poked. And we'll be getting that extra kill. Four and zero. Gamers two in ten minutes. And is this the Gamers two that we've been told about? for so long. The gamers too that want to compete at the top end of the Challenger series. Remember this, previous to this week, huh? Senkux, what are you Wait. doing? Well, he's gonna try and blow up Perks, and he actually has a lot of damage, gets the stun down with the gravity field, but that's a rise coming in from the top side. Senkux, he'll get the slight shield from the power transfer, but Wonder Wars on the fight as well. He gets him with the inner flame, and we'll be trying to get out of this fight. Hits with the bowler from Kickers as he's just in the bush. There's always a Rengar in the bush. He gets the minion, trying to kill that minion, trying to kill Wonder Wars. doesn't quite get him. Trying to get away here with the renewal. This should be Tower and Dragon coming from this for Gamers 2. Gamers 2 have a massive lead already. We're 11 minutes in, 18,600 gold to 14,600. Gamers 2 are destroying Dignitas very early on. We have seen this before from Dig, where they fall behind early and they do catch up in the macro game later, but if they fall so far behind with Gamers 2 take everything away from them, it's not really going to matter. Gamers 2 now take this first dragon of the game. That'll be back up in six minutes. And with that large CS advantage, large gold advantage, large kill, tower, and dragon advantage, Gamers 2 are ticking all of the boxes. And the problem for Team Dignitas right now is this composition for them uh, relies so much on Kobe being the main focus for this team. That's what the disengage is for. That's also what the Karma is going to bring with this, the shielding, the added mobility. But Team Dignitas need so much more time to bring Kobe into this game. Look at how far behind he is in just in CS alone. 110 CS to 80, 12 minutes into the game. And this was a matchup that, uh, that Team Dignitas picked themselves. The Caitlyn uh, was even the first pick in this matchup. Yeah. Pick, oh. pick number four for Gamers 2. Choose oh, one Jesse. of the bushes, you lose every time. <laughs> Wonder Wars there, he gets him. And he is locked down. He's going to have to stand there and try and get the damage on. It's obvious, that was almost very close with the crit and the headshot. And meanwhile, uh, Hybrid was there as well. Hybrid actually finds Nisbet. Nisbet. Uh, actually has found hybrid. Mid lane though, we did see a kill onto Senkux while that was all happening. Uh, Senkux was a straight call out. I think we're going to see that right now. Yeah, he's 0-2 and 1 though at the same time. It's again, Kick is just getting in there. A yep. little bit of a overkill with the uh, <laughs> conquering sands, but uh, you know, it gets the job done. Shurima is eternal. Shurima is a turtle. Mid turret's going down. I think that is... Uh, the key thing at hand right now is uh, Perks is looking to push it down. A couple more hits on it, and that will be it. But, I mean, where did Team Dignitas go from here in this setup? Senkux hard, doesn't even have a, a completed item. He's just got the upgrade uh, on their Hex Core. Uh, the first upgrade as well. That's a hex core Mark One. Now they've got to contend with the Sun Disk for, a, for about a minute or so, just sitting here in this middle lane, shoving them in constantly. Top tower should be the next focus. You can see yeah, Jesse is already up there. That's a fairly straightforward objective to take. And with no dragon on the map, I actually think inner turrets are really going to be difficult for Team Dignitas to hold. We talked about how between the Azir, between the Caitlyn, one person dies and the turret goes down. That is going to continue to happen now in favor of Gamers 2. Uh, clearing off this top wave as well. Kickers, uh, while that was happening, took away another blue buff away from Obvious. That was the second of the game he'd, uh, he'd taken away. Uh, Jesse farming up this top wave has now swapped up there with Hybrid. There's 2v2 with Nisbet coming in. Uh, Copy is staying in the bot lane, probably most likely freezing from the looks of it. Uh, trying to get as much farm as possible, catch up to Jesse, and just try and store this out until later into the game. Because in terms of scaling, they're in pretty good shape. Um, they have the Victor, great. Right. Jinx, Karma, not entirely sure how she fits in in this role. I would assume okay. Her scaling is a lot from her different skills. Second point is in W4, but here comes Ryze into the middle lane. Oh, Sankux, he has to burn the flash, and no matter how this turns out, he drops low. He has to death ray lands onto Perks, but oh, Rocket from the bottom lane! Barely scratches him in the middle lane. Or goes right past Azir, rather. Does Azir have ears? I'm not entirely sure. Jesse almost getting CC'd up there by the Karma. 
And now here comes Kickers again. Can he get some more value out of his ultimate? He's running after Wonderware. He does get the ultimate down, comes in with the dredge line. Nisbet is there to block it though with the black shield. And every single one of the ultimates from Kickers is uh, countered. He's made something happen every single time. Nisbet flash forwards into the soul shackles. He's locking them down. Wonderware and the rest of the team is in tow. Gets the CC onto hybrid as well. That was perfect CC layering from Dick. Yeah, very well done. The overzealous from hybrid as well. G2 still will look to push this turret down, but quite uh, honestly, Smitty J on the bottom side of the map is uh, looking to push things in as well. I don't know who can actually deal with him right now, apart from maybe Cobby from a distance. As I uh, wonder where we'll be going down there himself. But G2 are relentless for this top side tower. Ace in the hole comes out. It's going to be enough to force them back. Teleport's actually coming in oh, hey. from Smitty J. He's looking for the engage right onto the Flame Chompers. Oh, perks from the mid lane, though. Maybe caught out by Obvious. He'll blast them away of the, uh, with the soldiers there. But Obvious has also been locked down. Sankook's now coming in from the middle lane, looking for the power transfer. Lands on top. Perks, not quite enough. Smitty J trying to get away, but not before he's caught in the gravity field. Now Cobby is trying to chase after. He gets the first kill and the passive getting excited. Now chasing it onto Jesse as well. The uh, this storm is following him down. There comes oh. the ultimate. Who's it going for? Off the map, but it may be hitting some random Yordle off in Rune Terror. Comes in for the power transfer. Senkooks gets him with the auto. That's a dead rise. It is a dead rise. And this, I think, uh, stems back to G2 with their consistency point when it comes to bringing the jungler in. I actually managed to speak with Kickers yesterday after their game and, and talk about how the team is, is kind of feeling and sitting and we were talking about shot calling and who it is that's doing the shot calling because that was the big problem with the Unicorns of Love. The plays that G2 have made, like that where they're overzealous, have not been involving Kickers. Kickers was not really around for the beginning of that fight. It was the teleport coming from Smitty J. So I wonder how much control Kickers is having over the shot calling in all situations or whether that's decisions being made by other players. It's a very interesting one that unfortunately we won't find out the answer to, yeah. but certainly seems to be a, a little bit of a trend thus far in this game. However, Gamers 2 still have had pretty good shot calling throughout the entire thing. Only the positives were my shot. Well, no, I'm not. <laughs> that's not what I'm going to do. I'm not going to attribute the positives to Kickers and the negatives to everybody else. <laughs> it's more of a question of is that uh, like a factor at all. But speaking of positives, in comes Senkux and that lands a lot of damage. He really has started to open up from this fight. Did manage to get himself a couple of kills here. As uh, you can see, Jesse, too low mana, too low health to get himself away and. Yes, the Jinx ult doesn't quite hit on perks, but Senkux knew his target and uh, knew he could chase him down. There we go. Get boop. Pops him. Pops him. Fast on the draw. Senkux angered the beast. He's trying to come back into this game now. 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. That's a good start. Obvious gets perks with the ultimate. Again, the Emperor's Divide comes out. And he actually jumps into Obvious as well. Gets the CC and Ooh. the Sun Disc. Oh, another Conquering Sands comes out just as the Anchor Toss comes in from Hybrid. And it is enough to take him out. Never dive a Sun Disc. It does a lot of damage. It does. I mean, I, I, not too sure what Obvious actually was doing in that situation. I, he had the rest of his team around him, but nobody reacted to it. Yeah. It looked like the, the call was made and, and just nobody really wanted to go in. And it's going to uh, end up with another dragon going over to Gamers 2. That's the second now of the game. They're up in dragons, they're up in towers. They're just up in basically every metric. A little bit of farm in mid lane is the only real advantage Team Dignitas has. And even with that, look, Perks is 4, 1, and 3. So the actual gold is uh, still in Gamers 2's favor. Yeah, Senkux is going to be tanking that ace in the hole. This mid tower should be falling. His minions are dying quickly, but yeah, one more auto. There we go. Uh, five and nine in terms of kills. Big gold advantage. It's now 18 minutes into this game, getting to that 20 minute mark. And the three towers have gone over to Gamers 2. This is definitely a very different Gamers 2 from what we've seen so far. And we asked the question before, like, how is a mid-tier jungler from the LCS going to play up against a upper-tier jungler from the CS? And right. Right now, pretty well. <laughs> yeah, pretty well. And this is the second game in a row. Out of the two games we have as a sample size, it's... I don't want to say it's to be expected, because there's a lot of weight that falls on the shoulders of junglers. And certainly, uh, Team Dignitas, you'd expect, would have uh, overall better synergy than G2. But 
Certainly, Kekis in these two games has been causing a multitude of problems for Obvious. Both games, Kekis has really just stopped Obvious from having any impact on the game at all. I mean, think of yesterday's game. It was still fairly close at this point. Then G2 went and take the Baron. Then they take inhibs, then more turrets and close the game. It was within about seven minutes of taking the Baron at about that 27, 28, 29 minute mark. We're on track for possibly that again, but f maybe even faster from gamers too. The fact that they have a bigger lead now than they did in yesterday's games. And a lot of it has been the fact that between Kikis and Perks and Smitty J just kind of holding his own, they've been able to just completely outplay Team Dignitas when it came to the laning phase and their map movements. Now, Dig do have a decent amount of wave clear here, though. With the with the Jinx, the Victor, yeah. even Wonderware with the uh, with the Soul Flare, like that's a lot of wave clear. So, unless they get picks beforehand, which they have been getting, maybe a little difficult to siege unless they get massively ahead. Um, alternatively, they can just play around dragons as they have two already, and Dig and a head on confrontation. I don't think will come out on top unless the they get the outnumber and a, and a good setup to the fight. Um, Perks and Hybrid here, just trying to push in, get some vision. Set up for the uh, control around the dragon in terms of those wards. Bottom lane. Whoa, that's a big CS differential. Yeah. 194 over to uh, 138. We even saw Kobe solo farming in the lane for a long time, and he still hasn't caught up. Yeah, I mean, Jesse has been split pushing himself, or at least just sitting over in a side lane, mm. pushing down turrets. So while, while you know... Uh, Team Dignitas have built this composition around Kobe. They haven't got the gold onto him. He is uh, 1,600 gold down in his lane matchup, and they need Jinx to be more impactful in this game before Caitlyn. Mm. Caitlyn has a, a, a later game spike than you expect a, a Jinx to have, really. But Jinx becoming more potent earlier and staying relevant for the rest of the game should be problematic for gamers too. However, the itemization on Jinx right now is behind, and it's it's not going to be enough. However, Perks has been caught out. There's uh, Senkux going in. Yeah, one thing you can rely on is Nisbet landing fantastic Dark Bindings, and the Storm is still chasing Perks down. He flashes after he gets the power transfer, but he should be going down. He actually gets the uh, stun down onto two players. One of the words there to assist him, but the shutdown comes in from Kickers. He gets the damage out himself, jumps onto Wonder, where is he still in range of the budge? Jesse now coming into the fight with the net in aggressively. Although it comes through, blocked out by Nisbet. Does Hybrid have the dredge line? He does not does not decide to go for it. That's a one for two trade in favor of Gamers 2. Team Dignitas do not have the health to take these fights. Obvious was forced onto a very early Sight Stone before he even finished Cinder Hulk, so he only has that Cinder Hulk completed. Nisbet will Black Shield the uh, the rest of the hook coming from Hybrid, but Gamers 2 just are uh, so far away ahead when it comes to their damage that Team Dignitas just can't sit in these fights. And it doesn't really help that Senkux is making plays where he's flashing forward. Yes, he's getting kills, but if he is dead, that is so much of the damage that is not there for Team Dignitas that it's just easy for G2 to clean up these fights. It's like the anti-Ryu scenario where you eliminate the enemy carry, but they still have more, and the oh. other carries are better than your carries at the moment. And Smitty J, you can see how much damage he's dealing. Yeah. Um, a lot. A and lot. Also in that top lane, again, you can see the CS differential. 60 farm when Wonderware had the advantage in the laning phase. That's a long time since then. And Wonderware has been getting not a lot of the farm. I don't even think it was like farm allocation either because we've seen a lot of the, the, the players in like a 1 3 one setup. So it's not been like they've been in the group and it's like, okay, this guy gets it, this guy gets it. It's just simply because Smitty J has been accumulating more farm and zoning Wonderware away. Yeah, it, it has been, and Wonder Where even uh, got ganked early on as well, didn't survive the ganks coming from Kikis. And that's kind of, in the games where Team Dignitas have fallen behind, it's kind of been one of their biggest problems, is if Wonder Where doesn't survive the ganks, which tends to be the case, it's difficult for him to get back in the game, and a fight like this is not going to help. This is the numbers, while yes, they're in favor of gamers too, uh, of Team Dignitas, Gamers 2 were already backing away from this. Yes, they don't have flashes available to, to really get themselves out fast, but G2 were already just it, on the way out. There was no real way of Team Dignitas mm. catching them, and now the Greg Assault is down. Oof. That's a lot of damage from Overload. But <laughs> Nisbet's always going to land that Dark Binding. Smitty J will have to stand still for a couple seconds. Here's the third Dragon. 
Dignitas are not going to contest. Um, probably the smartest decision right now, but six minutes of time, they're going to have to start contesting these dragons. Right. They can't just sit there and do nothing. They can't let the next one go. Uh, if you put Gamers 2 while this far ahead onto the tipping point where it's only a further six minutes, and that's basically game, yeah. they already have enough damage as it is. They don't need extra damage with uh, the aspect of the dragon buff, but they did just pick up extra mobility with that movement speed buff that comes from the third dragon. So now it's even harder for Team Dis uh, team Dignitas to disengage. I nearly said Team Disengage then, but uh, that's kind of what like they've got. Be. They've got the Gragas, they've got the Karma to run away, but this Karma pick honestly hasn't worked. No, he's built the Leandries, he's built the pen, and if you're building a Land uh, Leandries uh, with this type of champion, you're expecting poke. You're, like, you're expecting just to poke your opponents down, whittle them down with the Leandries. Um, but we haven't seen that at all. We've never seen Dignitas group and disengage and poke and disengage. Right. We've never we've never got to that point. And and the other factor is, you know, we asked how is Wonderware building. He has put points in Q and then W. Okay. So uh, that is in fact how he has uh, built up. Only one point in the shield which means that when it comes to protecting Kobe, it's not all that valuable yeah. outside of the, the Mantra movement speed. Oh, Nisbeth, somebody's in trouble. You. Oh, Kikis was looking for Senkux. Okay, use the ultimate but clear the jungle is one of the important things. Now they can turn away and look to bait again because they know Team Dignitas don't have any wards on the Baron. So now Team Dignitas have to push. They have to try and get in on this. If they face check, that's very dangerous. No blue trinket available. Too late to the that. draw, man. This is not yep. good from Dick. You gone. either immediately go or you immediately do not go, and that means Kobe split up from the pack. He went the wrong way. We saw this from Warlight last time as well, last week. You do not split from the pack because Rengar will be there and Rengar will kill you. Looking for the disengage. This is where Dignitas should thrive, where they can try and get away from a fight, but everyone has to be in close quarters so that the uh, Defiance can come out in the middle lane. Can they? Anti-Siege hard enough, not with these no. Baron minions. Not at this point, not with the Baron minions plus the damage. One Caitlyn Q or some Azira auto attacks from the soldiers is going to just destroy anybody on Team Dignitas at that point. I mean, the, this Karma doesn't have a lot of health. They've got Morgana support, so there's no tank from the, the support role either. And yeah. Obvious has been pushed so far behind this game. He is still only on Cinder Hulk and a Sightstone. Does not have anything else completed for tankiness. And that is just the biggest problem that Team Dignitas have right now is they cannot survive these fights. Kick is one's blood. He jumps, he jumps again. He jumps onto Senkux, but now he has to walk through the gravity field. Actually dissipates, comes in with the Dark Binding, but it lands onto Smitty as he jumps in and has to knock back in from Obvious. This is an extremely good fight, or rather an extremely good pick off by Team Dignitas EU. There is the Summoner's Drift coming in from Perks, getting himself out of that nasty situation. Um, and Wonder World will clear away this ward. So a nice two picks as Gamers 2 get a little over-aggressive. Yeah, over-aggressive once again. And I guess that answers our question of, is it Kikis that's potentially responsible for the overzealous plays or not? That one Kikis was involved with, so there's no, right no second <laughs> guesses on that one. So uh, the answer is no, that is as Gamers 2 as a whole with uh, a little <laughs> bit of overconfident plays. I'm glad we can sort that one out. That case, case closed. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Take him away, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Take him to Rune Terror Jail. Uh, obvious. We'll be heading back here. Also with Senkux. There's a lot of carries off the board for a couple seconds. Kobe sat in the middle lane. Siege is being set up in the top lane by Gamers 2, and there's, there's basically no reaction from Dig. Or there is a reaction from Dig, but it's five seconds too slow. It's too slow at this point. Yeah, yeah there's, there's nothing Team Dignitas can do at this point. The Caitlyn just has too much range. The Azir is able to push down so quickly as well. Um, how, in my mind, did Team Dignitas hold on to this? Somehow, they have to stop G2 from standing in front of an inhibitor tower. It's going to come from warding and then a pick using the Grag Assault, um, which was the attempt at what happened there. But Hybrid didn't get blasted over the wall because that wall is too big to do it on. So now you have to wait. Now you have to wait for that cooldown to be back available. Just try and wave clear for now, and then try that play again. You have to hope that gamers too uh, get over aggressive at just before this dragon. 
if the dragon comes up and gamers 2 can bait Team Dignitas towards the dragon, that's the most dangerous situation to be in against this Gamers oh, 2 squad. This is the opposite of that would take one, but the ultimate comes in, there's the depth charge, he's dead. He doesn't need to aim that one. Obvious over the wall will be getting away. Wonderware also picked him from the top lane. So was Senkugs actually before that was all happening. He just got caught out in the middle lane. Three members taken away. Gamers 2 could go for an inhib, they could take a tower, they could just go for dragon. The rift is their oyster. Yeah, they got a Oh! Sniper. Got him. Had a silencer on. Didn't yeah. even see it. <laughs> yeah. Can you put a silencer on I a mean, rocket? silencing doesn't really stop you from seeing. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Well, nice. at this point, G2 will go for the uh, the inhibitor turret. You can see what uh, you know what we know about any kind of <laughs> firearms <laughs> being from the UK. That doesn't happen. But pushing on to the tower as uh, G2 have themselves the opening. There's the explosive cask used and. G2 will get this one. It's going to cost him some health on Jesse, though. Jesse may Ooh. die for this one, or maybe not. He will be getting away here. Had to burn the flash and the heal. Kickers may be the one paying for his sins, though. Wonder where in from the sidelines. Not entirely sure if that will matter too much. He gets the defiance down, trying to get in range. Doesn't find the Q the right way. Smee J will just turn around. He knows he's probably dead, but can he get something for it? Not quite, but very close. Very, very close at this point, but Team Dignitas can't capitalize off. There's no Baron, there's nothing else, and is this the European sniper that we're gonna see here? I think it is. Uh, no, it's Kickers. Okay, it's Kickers. Uh, Can Lions be snipers? Oh, this is how he gets Senkooks. Can Lions be snipers? Yeah. I don't Probably know. Probably not. Can uh, Lions be anything other than Lions? <laughs> so I think that's, that's the <laughs> question. I don't really think they choose a profession. <laughs> Maybe, but, maybe. Okay, we're gonna see it. We're gonna see the I'm ult ready. from Kobe. I mean, it's anticlimactic as we know it hits. Yeah, that's true. Oh, it was on a ward as well. Ah, uh, that's less impressive. Uh, it was actually better not knowing. Yeah, it was so much better not knowing. Yeah. Ah, <sighs> man, I feel cheated now. Yeah. Yeah. We gave away an oh <laughs> nothing. Yeah. For what? For Turn what? down for what? Hybrid and perks will be taking away this dragon. That's the fourth of the dra uh, fourth of the dragon, fourth of the game. Not even Khaleesi has that many, and the fifth dragon is on the horizon. And Dig need to do something in the next six minutes, otherwise they are done. For. I think the biggest problem is they've needed to do something for the last kind of 16. 31 minutes and 17 I seconds. No, because no, I'm not going to go that far because Team Dignitas have been somewhat active when it comes to punishing Gamers 2, but yeah. Gamers 2 have always been on the front foot. They've always been the ones looking for picks, even if it's backfired on them. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something we haven't really seen too much from Team Dignitas, although it did creep in last week against Ex Nihilo, where Ex Nihilo looked for the turrets early. They got the turrets, pushed Team Dignitas fairly close to the limit. So. If Team Dignitas can outlast Gamers 2, which isn't going to happen, by the way, by pushing out of lane without proper warding. Uh, I mean, he's got wards alongside him, but he's now gone up to the bush, and that's a dead karma. And that's a late game Rise. That's probably a dead Morgana if Rise catches up, but he can't right now. So, uh, well, it certainly is if he catches up, but it was more on, does he get the movement speed boost from his ult? The answer was no. Nope. A late game Rise is a natural habitat. In comes the lion. Can he find his prey? Well, Nautilus is there. Tries to get the lockdown. Kavi has been stuck in place. Charged up the ultimate. Doesn't get it down. This bet in from the mid lane as well. Lands a dog binding. It keeps Kickers there for a while. And he will be backing off. Now they're moving on to this inhibitor. Obvious is manning up the front lines. Kavi and Wonderware are down for the count. This should be the inhibitor falling. Smitty J is pushing the bottom lane. Senkrix and Nisbet are reacting to this. Overload comes out. Does not connect. Takes away the minion line. Can Gamers 2 get any more from this? Dredge line comes across. They are looking to close in. Can they get onto Senkux? If Senkux dies, this may be, uh, if not a large amount of damage to the base, maybe even the game. Yeah, yeah, at this point, Baron just respawned. That's going to be where Gamers 2 are going to look to go. That's uh, a fairly easy one. But again, Team Dignitas has to be baited out of their base time and time again this game. Will they fall into the same trap? Senkux is trying to de-ward already. Trying to get there before Gamers 2 can get themselves in front of the Baron. Are Team Dignitas actually going to just look to clear out the vision and rush this? I would hope not. I don't feel like they've got the damage to rush this quickly. It would be a very, very bold move if they start this Baron. 
it, they start it, and okay, there's oh. no vision for G2. They instantly have to pull yeah. back as soon as they see that ward. The problem is, this is too late. Super minions pushing in through the top lane. G2 actually could just cut down mid lane and take that in hip turret. I don't think there's too much that Team Dignitas could have done about that. No. They play it safe, though. Right. Um, that would have been a play that would have yielded a lot of rewards, but also more risk involved. Yes. This one, pretty much nothing that Dick can do while they're going to try. Perks does get separated from the pack, but he's just going to turn around. Obvious gets hooked in. Hyper takes him out. The rest of the team kick is chiming in for the kill. Ten Kirks, the damage out from Smitty J annihilates him. And now the rest of the team is being chased down. The flash, the exhaust comes out onto Perks, keeping him at arm's reach. But the, here comes the teleport in from Smitty J. He is cutting off the escape route. You have nowhere to go. There is nowhere to run because Smitty J is there to find you. Cobby trying to get to, uh, back to base here. He pops the heal at full health just for the movement speed to get to uh, get back to his base. He gets there, but two autos from the Sand Soldiers chunked him down to half. There is no way he can defend this. And this is game two closing in for the kill. They're closing in for the kill. And they're closing in on the first place spot in the round robin here. A real end of the season uh, swing in momentum for him. And that's the second Nexus turret falling. Gamers 2 take down Team Dignitas a flawless week, and they take the number one spot in EUCS. They do a real late in the season surge from Gamers 2. They racked up enough wins across the weeks, only dropping two games, as did Team Dignitas, but they won the most important ones. <laughs> the one against the top of the table. And honestly, Gamers 2 are looking so much better now than I feel like they did in the first couple of weeks of this split. And honestly, as I said in the game, this may be the first Gamers 2 that actually have looked like they can be the team to get that automatic promotion spot. Yeah, they looked so good. Such a big difference. Well, we do want to talk to one of the players after that incredible win and incredible week. So we do have Perks on the line here. Hey, Perks, how's it going? Uh, hello, it's going hello. great. <laughs> I can imagine. You just locked in the first spot in the uh, the Challenger Series going into playoffs. Uh, you know, you guys from the whole split have quietly got uh, wins here and there. What are your feelings on how Gamers 2 have performed in the summer split? Uh, excuse me, can you say again? How do you feel Gamers 2 have played across the whole summer split? Oh, uh, well, we haven't been that good uh, in the beginning. But with some roster changes and way more practice, we have become pretty good. Um, I think we can contest for the first place really easily. Well, you just mentioned roster changes there, Perks, and Kickers has now come into your lineup. You look like an entirely different team coming into this week. What do you attribute that success to? Uh, well, um Excuse me, can you, can you repeat the question? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, you look amazing right now. So what oh. do you think were the factors that caused you to look so good in this recent week? Uh, I think it's mostly my team uh, doing really great. And I have a great jungler and support behind me who always uh, help me out if I need something. And we just play really good as a team. There is like no me in the team. So. For sure, for sure. Uh, how has Kikis actually changed the team this week? Oh, well, he has a uh, really lot of experience and he's, re he's really skilled player. So he's kind of guiding us uh, to victory, let's say. And yeah. Yeah, definitely guided to a victory there. Once again, congratulations on the win. You've locked that number one spot. Thank you very much for the interview and we'll talk to you later. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. This game is two picking up those last two wins. Flawless week with kickers coming in. And yeah. uh, you can definitely see that still humble for games two. Uh, you know, they know they had a bit of a rough first couple of weeks, but they've tightened that up. Mm, there's no me and team, but there is if you rearrange some letters. There is, but yeah. then you'd be spelling team wrong. <laughs> That'd be Tommy. Oh, that's true. Damn. But nobody played Tommy Kench nope. today. No, nope. so. he's uh, more like Tom Benched. Anyway, so kickers in that game, as we were just talking about, was super great. Again, in the first game, did super well, pushed obvious out of the jungle. Second game here, Rengar as well. You can see how well he did. Nine, four, and uh, 14 overall in those two games. Just looked great, brought a lot to yep. that team. He did, it, and a lot of it was a lot of the early game focus that Kickers actually piled on with the Lee Sin, with the Rengar, set the rest of the team up to compete very well. But yeah. the one thing we can't really, it, it's we can't really skim over, it is not all Kickers. 
it is strong solo laners, uh, strong laning in general from gamers too, and then you add on to that somebody who is making plays. We said last week didn't feel like hybrid and Max Law were playmakers. Now they've got one. Now they have KKS and they're looking very strong. Yeah, the number one spot. I really feel like gamers too just came out of nowhere. They just arrived and it's like, oh, we're number one now. Here we go. But uh, yeah, that's it. We're done with the round robin. So the teams are locked. So let's see where everyone ended up. In number one, it is Gamers 2. Tied up with Team Dignitas EU, but that doesn't matter. They lost their head-to-head, -head, so they're now in second place. Followed by Denial, who will be playing Team Dignitas. Mouse come in fourth, who will play Gamers 2. And then we have Overclockers UK, who uh, won today. So they uh, are not last, and it will be X and Elo 1 and 9. Yeah, and as you alluded to, though, the uh, the teams are locked into the spots, so let's make it very easy and take a look at the bracket to see nice. exactly what is going to happen. So, Team Dignitas play against Denial. Gamers 2 face Maus, and remember that that won't be taking place next week because EUCS and the LCS is taking a break next week, but we will be back the week after, starting with our playoffs on Tuesday, the 4th of August. Yeah, that's right. The semi-finals are going to be Team Dignitas EU versus Denial Esports. That'll be August 4th, and Gamers 2 and Maus will be August 5th, but immediately the day after. So mark your calendars. It will be kicking off the action at 1800 CET. Yeah, that'll be the Tuesday. The Tuesday, Tuesday yes. Challenger. Make sure you head over to lolesports.com to uh, actually catch the schedule for that and any action you may have missed over the entire split if you are hyped for those playoffs. Come prepared for playoffs, and there's a lot of other action to watch around the world as well. Always on the road to Worlds. Playoffs are heating up. Yeah, it is going to be world soon. But while we're finished for today, our global coverage doesn't stop here. Tune in again at 12 a.m. CEST or 3 p.m. Pacific time for Primetime League. After that, Freakins Irene, as always, will be bringing you their final week of the North American Challenger Series round robin. Let's see who takes the first spot over there. Is it going to be Renegades? Maybe. Is it, it going to be Cloud9 good. Tempest? There's we'll a lot see. of questions. And with that, the European Challenger Series Summer Split round robin is complete. So from myself, Stress, and the Challenger Broadcast team, thank you for following the action so far in summer, and we'll be back in under two weeks for playoffs. See you then. Not going for full tank, but Let's see uh, how we're going to see how it does. <laughs> Against Godbro here. He's getting range first to allow those auto attacks to land. Olympic's going to help him out with that with the double man play, but gets bit called back into Celeba. Not sure if he entirely wanted that uh, scenario, but the flash forwards from Celeba, who would let the first kill with the Ren. Teleport now coming in by Musu. Maybe a little bit too late, or maybe not. He's just going to cancel it. Screw you, Invaler. But Wicked was getting chunked out on the bottom side himself. There's the ultimate coming in from Victor, landing onto Wick is going to chase him down, but he gets him with the Death Ray instead. The spear comes across will be sidestepped by Wendell, but Kozku also coming into the action. The flash into the body slam by Kyrae will be getting the stun out onto Mountain. He's going to be just stationary for days. Because remember this previous to this week, oh. Senkux, what are you Wait. doing? Well, he's going to try and blow up perks, and he actually has a lot of damage, gets the stun down with the gravity field, but that's a rise coming in from the top side. Senkux, he'll get the slight shield from the power transfer, but Wonder Words in the fight as well. He gets him with the inner flame. Oh. Perks from the mid lane, though, maybe caught out by Obvious. He'll blast him away with the, uh, with the soldiers there, but Obvious has also been locked down. Down, Senkux now coming in from the middle lane, looking for the power transfer, lands onto Perks. Not quite enough. Spinny J trying to get away, but not before he's caught in the gravity field. 